Thank you. I call case 16 F0559 application of Bluestone Wind LLC for a certificate of environmental compatibility and public need pursuant to Article 10 for construction of the Bluestone Wind Farm project located in the towns of Windsor and Sanford, Broome County. This public statement hearing is being convened pursuant to a notice initially issued on January 11th and modified by notice issued January 28th, 2019. We're here today to take statements on the record from members of the public who have an interest in a proposal that's been put forth by Bluestone Wind LLC to construct a, a op, to construct and operate a 124 megawatt wind energy project in the towns of Sanford and Windsor. The purpose of the, the public statement hearing is to take comments from members of the public that will be transcribed uh, and become part of the record and will inform the deliberations of the New York State Board on Electric Generation and Siting and the Environment. Um, I have a number of, uh, I want, let me introduce myself. My name is Sean Mullaney. I am the presiding examiner in this proceeding. I uh, am employed as an administrative law judge with the New York State Department of Public Service and was appointed to be the presiding examiner in this particular Article 10 proceeding. Sitting to my right is Administrative Law Judge Daniel P. O'Connell, who is uh, an ALJ with the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. And pursuant to Article 10, he has been assigned as Associate Examiner in this proceeding. Uh, as the ALJs, it's our duty to assemble the record and ensure for a, a fair process that allows for public input and uh, the orderly assembly of a record that ultimately will serve as the foundation for any decision that might be made by the New York State Siding Board. Um, today's public statement hearing is part of that process. We're soliciting comments from the public on the record uh, where they offer their input and their perspective on this proposal and how it might impact their lives and whether or not they support it and if so, why they support it or if they don't support it, why don't they support it so that the siting board will have an idea about what the folks in the affected area, the primarily affected area from an environmental point of view, feel about this project. Okay, do we have any questions at all about that? We're gonna, uh, we're gonna take comments in order. We ask that people fill out these cards. Uh, Joe in the back has these cards. We ask anybody who wants to offer comments on the record to please fill out a card so that we, we know your name and, and where you're where you're from uh, just very limited basic information and then I'm going to call the people up to offer their remarks in the order in which they fill out these cards um, it seems to be it's kind of a tried and true method it seems to be one of the fairest ways to do it um, I I note that we did have a, a I believe is a, a county legislator in the audience do, do we have any elected representatives who want to speak tonight and if so I typically as a courtesy invite them to come up first since uh, the way our government works they have a voice that represents more than just themselves uh, and I didn't go through these do we have any elected representatives that want to offer remarks okay then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and call the first speaker uh, David Marsh of the laborers local 285 Yes, please, Mr. March. Thanks for coming down okay. today. Uh, can I stand or should I you can, you can stand, but I do ask if you, if you do, just direct your remarks okay. toward this I'll thing here. Because the primary purpose is to get the transcript together. Okay. I do have a hard copy I'd like to give you. Thank you, sir. Um, so I represent 857 laborers in the southern tier. Uh, almost 300 of which live in Broome County. And uh, just uh, for the record, I want to make sure that it's known that Calpine has not compensated us in any way. We are just simply hoping to have jobs from this large project. And they are good jobs. They are good paying jobs with benefits for our members. 
and it'll benefit several other trades besides the laborers if these uh, wind turbines are built. We have built them elsewhere in Staben County. In fact, there is two other projects in Staben County that are going through the Article 10 process as we speak. Uh, the project will foster economic development through increased tax revenues, the utiliz utilization of local labor, will incre increase demand for local goods and services. A large, important energy project such as this wind farm will provide hundreds of good construction jobs for laborers and other trades right here in our hometown. Members of Labor Social 785 have a vested interest in this project as we are taxpayers, want to work locally, and are raising our families in this community. <clears throat> the Bluestone Wind Project will be a source of clean, locally generated power that will promote economic prosperity and environmental stewardship. It is also, will also help facilitate the state of New York clean energy future. We urge the New York State B Board of Electric Generation Siting and Environmental approve the Bluestone application so, we, uh, so more low-cost domestically produced clean energy will be generated and we can benefit from the jobs this large project will create. Uh, and that's really about it. I did, I did kept it short purposely because I know you have a lot of people that probably want to speak tonight, but uh, we would appreciate your consideration. We have seen these projects successfully built in other parts of upstate New York, and I'll just add that uh, there's always some, especially in a community where a, a project is coming online for the very first time, there's a lot of concern uh, talk to your, uh, if you have friends or neighbors out in Stabang County, talk to them. Find out what they think about their wind farms that have already been out there for as long as 15 years. You might be surprised uh, what you hear. Thank you. Mr. Marsh, thank you. Appreciate it. And the next speaker that we have is Pat Kurz. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Um, you know, I'm sitting here as a resident of the neighborhood. I'm sitting here as a person who will look at at least five windmills 360 degrees around my house. So I'm still concerned about my quality of life, and I still want to make that as, as a point that's important to me. And when I look down my road, I look at the properties that have come up for sale, and I notice that the properties over the last 20 years for sale on my road are purchased by people who are leaving urban areas to come to a rural lifestyle that's more bucolic, that they want to have the relaxing natural sounds that will be interfered with during the operation of these wind turbines. I'm concerned about people who have actually signed agreements with limited information about what they were signing away, one being their ability to talk about the project and how it impacts their life, either positively or negatively. Um, there's a clause that says you may not speak out about the, the wind turbines. That bothers me. I'm concerned with um, losing the tourism industry that seems to be the only one that sustains itself in this area, uh, unless you're coming to gawk at windmills, I don't see a point. I'm coming to participate with that environmental impact going on. So I'm concerned about the windmills may generate some income for a period of time where you might lose another income with pros um, sale of property. Um, people coming to visit and tour the area. I think those things are going to be negatively impacted. Uh, and will they balance out what we've gained from the um, wind production? Um, I'm concerned that even people who aren't, who are, have just signed leases to let things go through or to be a good neighbor, you know, are getting something like $8 a day to be a good neighbor. And does that $8 a day really buy? them that peace of mind and the serenity for the property that they have um, purchased years ago. I'm concerned that um, the, the um, real estate properties 
have to be impacted. I can't imagine. I know I would not have purchased my house knowing there were to be five windmills surrounding it. So if indeed I would need to move because I couldn't tolerate that business, my only recourse that I could think is either take a major hit on my property or raise my house and just have a tax for bare land. Seems like a waste of a valuable um, investment that I've made over time. I just feel very uncomfortable living in the town knowing that these things are going to be happening and I wonder what recourse I have once the project has started if I find that my visual impact is there. Is there a way to go and um, make some kind of statement or seek some kind of compensation for my problem or the noise or the flicker or whatever might be generated from the windmills? Is there a way for me as a resident to protest what's been going on when I wasn't asked in the first place when they were doing impact studies if it was going to be a problem at my residence. You know, I find that unfortunate that only um, public places or commercial places would have been checked for impact and not a residence. Thank you. David Lawrence. Thank you. Well, um, yeah, I may have talked about this a little bit during the uh, non-comment period, um, but it does. Uh, it, it, it relates, first of all, to land values. Yeah, we talk about land values. The land values are definitely going to go down. I mean, we're talking about putting up uh, windmills here that are banned in the areas that uh, the people who, who actually pay the money a lot of times to support this area. I mean, our tourists, uh, fishermen, um, uh, weekend home, summer home people, um, they're certainly not going to want to come up here. These are the people that had to the, gov the downstate governor ban them downstate. And they're moving them up here just like they do their landfills. And, um, you know, my own children, they're not going to want to stay here. You know, I've got the only thing we have in this town, it may not be much, but at least we have a quality of life, an uninterrupted, non-industrialized quality of life that these things are absolutely going to destroy. And, um, and so our property values are going to go down, which means our taxes will have to go up, our relative tax rate. There's no way. Um, and you have to ask yourself, why are they putting them here? It's certainly not for our benefit. I mean, these things, they produce power for 20,000 people. We have 2,500 residents. And somehow this is for us? It's not. And the tax, rate, he, the tax rates for the tax benefits for two towns, we're talking something, he says, high six figures, which I'm assuming is maybe over 500,000. You know, with 2,500 people and residents, our property taxes, you know, and we also have to understand that a lot of the New York residents... Uh, downstate residents who have weekend homes up here, they pay taxes and don't take services. Their children aren't in the schools. We actually get quite a big benefit from these people who are up here paying property taxes and not using our services. And now we're going to lose this potential uh, uh, resource, and there's no way we're going to be able to make up for that with 33 wind turbines. This isn't just going to be enough. Um, these things, everyone knows, based upon the siting studies and wind studies and whatnot, that, that this area isn't a great area for wind turbines. Everyone knows offshore is, and I dispute the fact that most wind is actually installed onshore. In fact, the most successful wind installations are offshore installations. Uh, the, new, the new larger turbines, which is probably what we're going to get here, nobody's committed to any particular size turbine in any of these... Uh, studies put on by environmental design and research, which are not Calpine or energy transfer partners. I mean, these guys, it's an environmental company, and their job is to put lipstick on a pig. They're doing a good job. You guys do a good job. Um, as far as CO2 emissions, everybody says these things are going to be great for the planet. These are great. No, this is not great. Okay, what our governor plans to do, our downstate governors, he wants to shut down Indian Point. It's going to take approximately 10,000 of these little wind turbines 
to replace Indian Point. And then you're going to need Calpine Energy, who is the largest producer of electricity from natural gas in the United States of America. You're going to need their wind turbines or their gas-fired turbines to supply the intermittent energy when the wind doesn't blow. These are going to be great for that because they're not going to blow as much as offshore turbines would. Every country that has, in fact, uh, shut down nuclear power plants in lieu of wind or whatever, actually their, uh, their global greenhouse gas emissions have increased, not decreased. This You can look this up everywhere. As far as impacts to human health and the environment, um, I heard a lot of talk about impacts to human health and environment when the frackers were up here, and everybody said, hey, this is going to be terrible for that, and a lot of people, well, we had different opinions about it, um, but at least they were willing to compensate everybody. They'd say, listen, everybody in the neighborhood's going to get something. These guys over here, they walk in, and they stick up a wind tower 10 feet away from you, and they tell you, what, you're not a, what was it, a visual receptor or visual, you weren't a critical party, something, I forgot what the legal terminology they used for it, but in any way, we were unimportant. I guess that's the quickest way to describe it. Um, and as far as, you know, impacts to, uh, first of all, our visual impacts are going to be severe. Our, uh, our local, uh, I mean, this is going to be a major construction project in our valley. Um, it's completely incompatible with the current land use. We're not a, an industrial electrical production facility. That's not what we do in this area. We like farms and fishing and um, barns. Um, you know, the, there's, what else are they going to put in here after that? You're going to look at this and say, well, this area is already trashed. What's coming next? Are they going to start next landfills? We'll probably get a half a dozen permanent jobs out of a, out of a few landfills. None of them labor jobs, by the way. And um, wildlife impacts. I mean, we're going to have, we have what, is, what they said was an unprecedented number of golden and bald eagles in our valley. And I know we have them, because I actually can't let my daughter's little foofy dogs out when the eagles are out there. They'll grab them. They look like rabbits. I grab them, too. Um, and there, these guys are everywhere. And somehow that impact's going to be minimal. And I don't understand how blades that spin at over 200 miles an hour, uh, 33 of them, are going to be minimal when scattered across this valley. And I see an eagle up there every time I look. Um, the sound levels, I'm hearing 45 decibels. 45 decibels is actually about a talking voice. And that's not a natural sound. It's not going to be like trees and birds and wind and grass. It's going to be the constant thumping. Thump, thump, thump of a windmill. And, in that, and how is that going? Even at night, I'm not going to have peaceful enjoyment. You're basically ruining... Everything that brought us here, brought my children here, and you're going to drive us out. If that's what you want, you want to put a nail in the coffin of this town, go ahead. But I think it's a bad idea. Um, on the, and on the other end, you know, this area also stretches across the shortest route between the Delaware and um, Susquehanna Rivers and is a known Indian trail. This was the main pathway prior to the white man's arrival where Indians cross between the two watersheds. And this actually was a, was a major trading route. In fact, I had talked to some of the guys from the Chestnut Society who came along back in those areas looking for the old chestnuts that the Indians had planted along those trails. Apparently, there are still some there. And those trails still exist somewhere back through there. And so if, for, from that standpoint, it was definitely a significant area. Um, the scale is just completely, completely out of character for our area. These things will go up taller than the Empire State Building on top of our peaks. They will be visual. You'll see them for 50 miles <laughs> if you live on a mountaintop. Now, I live in the valley. I'm only going to see the ones that are right next to me, but they're going to be taller than the Empire State Building. And I don't live in New York City, and there's a reason why I don't live in New York City. Why I don't want to, anyway. And that's because I don't want to live next to this. And they don't want to live next to them either, and that's why they're sending them up here. Anyway, thank you very much for your time. I'll pass the mic. Thank you, thank you Mr. Lawrence. <coughs> next up, uh, Stephen Payne.
Good evening. I'm Stephen Payne, safety instructor for the labor union. I'm in favor of Bluestone Wind Farms for many reasons. First being, the workers employed by the project will contribute to the local economy. Local workers who live here, they spend their paychecks here. Out-of-town workers, they take money home with them. Second, it will provide a source of clean electricity, clean low-cost energy, enough to power thousands of New York homes annually. With global warming, I'm all for it. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Payne. Time averages out. Mr. Richard Ruckler. All right. Well, first of all, I find it ironic because this is such a great deal and such a boost to the local economy and the local and the union workforce and everything. Why so many people still don't know about this? We didn't know anything about it till a year and a half ago. Till a year and a half ago, when um, uh, we saw somebody up on top of our hill. Went up there to see what the problem was. Uh, they were stopped up there looking at the sky, and there were people from the Audubon Society telling us about a, um, uh, this project here, this local wind turbine project, which we were shocked because we didn't move here to see the turbines. I quickly called up the Press and Sun Bulletin because I depended on them for my local news, and this being such a huge project, and um, they, they Quickly assigned Jeff Plasky on to it. I think he came out here and talked to Mrs. Price. Um, I don't know if he talked to Mr. Decker or not, but uh, they wrote a story about it. But like I said, if this was such a great deal and such, uh, um, uh, if everybody wants this so bad, why there's still so many people don't know anything about this? All right. Uh, this wind turbine project is both an economic and environmental catastrophe. The property values in this area are going to plunge. Calpine cites a study that claims there would be no impact to property. Do they think that we are a bunch of stupid country hicks that believe this report? This study was disputed by several sources and was sponsored by the Department of Renewable Energy, which has its own agenda. It's also based on turbines half the size to the ones proposed for this project. The Bluestone turbines are the tallest ever built inland. There is no data regarding the effect on property values for anything this massive. The turbines you might have seen in Madison County or down in Pennsylvania aren't even close to the size of these being proposed. Do your own research and Google property values in wind turbines. Eliminate the bias research sponsored by the wind, by the wind industry and you'll be shocked by the horror stories of the people living near these monstrosities. Use your own common sense do you really believe that having a 675 foot turbine shadowing your property with the constant pulsating noise along with the lights that make it look like an airport landing strip will not have any effect on your property value? The state and the governor know, the state and the governor know this. In 2017, they instituted a 30 mile setback for any shore wind turbines near Long Island, offshore wind turbines near Long Island. They know how they affect the property values on Long Island, but yet they won't have any effect up here. Calpine will not pay any property tax on this project. They will enter into a payment in lieu of taxes program called a pilot with the towns. They haven't disclosed how much they'll be paying, so I'll assume it'll be similar to the Casadega Wind Farm Project in Chautauqua County. Their pilot was approved last year for a project almost the same size as Bluestone. They will pay $4,000 per megawatt produced. If the turbines run at 100% capacity, they'll be paying $504,000 per year to the towns. However, turbines don't run at 100% capacity. We're lucky to reach 30%. Do the math. We'll be lucky to get $200,000 a year from this. And what happens when the pilot expires the Maple Ridge wind project in Tug Hill is now asking for a 97 percent reduction in their property assessment 
If you don't agree to a new pilot, the decommissioned costs for this project will run close to $3 million in today's dollars. Will Calpine be, will Calpine be around to pay this cost? They already declared bankruptcy once before in 2005. Calpine cites the employment advantages of this project. They claim seven full-time jobs will be created. The Maple Ridge Wind Farm has 195 turbines with 12 full-time employees. Do we really believe Calpine will create seven jobs for only 33 turbines? Sure, there's gonna be some temporary employment during the construction, construction phase, but how much of this will be skilled labor, labor brought in from outside the community, living in outsourced trailers? As for the union representatives here, I hope you get the jobs and I hope you stay here because land's gonna be really cheap afterwards. Calpine knew that this project was located in a major migration corridor of the endangered Golden Eagle. The Audubon Society was here this afternoon to give their presentation. I hope you look online to read their report. The Audubon Society requested funding to do an Eagle Migration Survey, which Calpine was forced to pay for. In the spring of 2008, the Audubon Society saw so many bald eagles, and I quote them, on some days it is impossible to clearly count or identify individual eagles. Although the purpose of the survey was to study eagle migration, what was surprising was the amount of non-migrant eagles. These are eagles that winter in the area and could be constantly flying back and forth, increasing the chances of mortality. The Audubon Society claimed to have surveyed an unprecedented amount, and I'm quoting them on their report, unprecedented amount of non-migrant golden eagles. How do you think these eagles will fare against swirling turbine blades 500 feet across? In summary, what do we get out of this deal? A couple jobs and a slight help with taxes. And we are left with a 57 acre industrial wasteland whose leaseholders will probably move away once they find out they can't live next to these 700 foot monstrosities and are too ashamed to look at their neighbors in the eyes for having ruined their way of life and property values. Sanford and Windsor, like the rest of the southern tier, have been losing population. Do we really think this will reverse that trend? Do you really believe people will want to live in the turbine shadow or even sight? I'm originally from Indiana. I didn't move here for more employment opportunities or lower taxes. Indiana has New York beat on both those. I wanted to live here because of the beauty of our forest and hills. This is spectacular countryside that too many of us take for granted. I certainly wouldn't have purchased my property if I knew these towns were gonna abuse my property rights. I encourage the towns to hire an independent firm or even have Binghamton University study the economic ramifications of this project. Don't believe everything you hear. At a minimum, do your own research. Keep in mind, these turbines are twice as big as almost anything else out there. Don't feel rushed to make a decision. The decision you will, ha you will make will affect these towns for well after we're gone. I have a Facebook site. If you guys, any comments at all, appreciate it. Concerned residents against Bluestone Wind Farm. Thanks. Mr. Rob, do you have an extra copy of your written remarks? Yep. Irene Weiser. Hi, I'm Irene Weiser. I'm a council member in the town of Caroline, which is in Tompkins County. And I am here because I got a notice of this uh, public hearing, and I am a big supporter of wind. 
I, I, sorry, I'm in, in the microphone. I thought it'd be loud enough. I'll, I'll try and speak louder. So, so I am a big supporter of wind. Uh, I think it is the most efficient way to bring renewable energy. Uh, I hear people that, that offshore wind uh, can produce more, but you know what? We need it both places. We can't reach our energy goals unless we have onshore wind along with offshore wind. And offshore wind is honestly a long way off. It takes a long time to build. Um, this, is, this is ready and can happen, and it needs to. I, I only wish that our town of Caroline had uh, the wind resources and the, uh, the transmission line resources to be able to have wind come into to, to our town. Uh, it's, it would be a boon to our economy uh, and, frankly, a boon to our future. Uh, I, I get it that this is a substantial change to what we're all used to in, in rural communities and the rural views. But I'm, I'm, I'm less worried about the views that I'm used to and the, the views and the planet that our kids are going to have. And if we don't change what we're doing and do it soon, uh, the kinds of things that they're going to be looking at are a lot worse than wind turbines. So I fully support this project. Uh, I encourage people who are concerned, as was recommended earlier, to go to Schuyler County or to go up to Fenner or go any number of places in New York State where there are already wind farms. Um, I think you'll find that they are an economic boon to the communities, that property values have not declined, and that the pay pilot payments are uh, significant to rural towns. And as a, as a council member in, in a rural town, I know how hard it is to, to pay the bills each year, and I would sure be welcome to have that kind of money come in. Thank you. Ken Wiley. Thanks for coming. Do I need the microphone? Oh, yeah, please. They have to hear them. That's part of the shtick. Um, I'm Ken Wiley, a president of the partnership in uh, Windsor, the Windsor Partnership. And uh, as such, the partnership fully supports the Bluestone Wind and their project. Mind me asking, what is the partnership? Partnership essentially is a collection of citizens and some of our legislators here. What we do is get together once a month and plan activities for the community. We do first night, we do the Corn Festival and Tractor Show, uh, and we take care of certain uh, amenities around the community, like the Windsor sign down here, planting flowers, generally making the community a little better place, a little nicer place to be. But the partnership supports this project. Uh, just briefly, uh, essentially the potential for jobs, both in the construction and the operation of the facility uh, can only be good for our area, only good for our area, since we are a depressed area per se. Uh, along with that, in addition, the partnership has received support from Bluestone already, and we would like that to continue because it really helps us put on these projects and help them grow, which would be one of our big goals, certainly, in having these projects uh, and these endeavors that we do for the community. And I guess on a more global feeling level, uh, it's, it'd be nice to have Windsor and Sanford be able to make their mark on addressing this carbon footprint and addressing the big problem of global warming. And I think we can finally do that if we have something like Bluestone in our backyard. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, the last card I have is Deborah Rogler. And, and before Ms. Rogler starts, if anybody else would like to offer comments on the record, um, we'd very much like to have you do so. 
we uh, we're going to keep this hearing open for for an hour, so we're going to keep it open until 8 p.m. And there's a lot of folks here, so I'd like to make your time worthwhile. So if anybody's on the fence in terms of offering comments, I urge you to to fill out a card and, and come up and speak. Thanks. Thank you. Trust me, I won't talk till eight o'clock. Um, I do support a lot of green renewable energy activities um, done in the right areas. They are absolutely wonderful for um, areas where there is a lot of openness, both for solar and for wind. But really what I want to stress is some of the stuff that we've already heard. Um, the pilot program, uh, I encourage the town residents to really stay and work with their town boards to see what is being negotiated for the pilot program, stay on top of it, to just make sure that you have a really good idea. And as residents and taxpayers, we know where the future lies, that they're not just looking at short-term interests, um, putting up the construction and getting paid for it, but they're looking at long-term and you as a long-term resident living here. Um, I also think on the other side, concern should be looked at as to where these turbines are at. Um, a lot of leases are have been entered in, but as you have heard, there's residents here that will be affected either by um, the grinding, pulsating, the flickering, and they do have a high probability of impacting um, property values. So please stay in tune with that and look at, um, do your own research because a lot of the turbines, these are proposed to be very large. Um, if you strolled across the New York, Pennsylvania border into Susquehanna, Wayne County, those turbines down there on the hillsides are half the size of what's being proposed here. So they are going to be massive. And then also up here, they'll be sitting on hillsides that maybe are in the range of elevation of about 1,800 feet. Um, on top of that, with the, in the ballpark of 673 feet, on top of the 1,800 feet, um, they are going to be massive and the effect where they're at in the residents are they practical for being there um, as also uh, one of the the wind was brought up here are they efficient um, if you go to the u.s department of energy website and look at wind for broom county and right on through this area deposit windsor sanford Afton, um, you will see that um, the U.S. Department of Energy classifies this area as insufficient to generate power effectively and efficiently. Um, these, there's a lot of advancements in the turbines. These are going to be hopefully state-of-the-art, big, but it still will not suck in the strong, we do not have the strong winds to support the wind industry the way I think is we're being told. So I really emphasize that you do your research and look um, at a lot of reports out there rather than just take some of the data that we've been seeing or reading um, might be one-sided. Um, I do have to encourage once again that you stay in tune with your local town officials because I think um, if I found it or followed everything right, the town officials are the ones that are going to m help make the decision and pass the information along to the sitting board about putting in the wind farms. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. And uh, I have one last card, uh, Chris Conroy. Okay. Uh, I want to make this very brief. I'm a resident of Zambin. We have about 2,400 people. I think that's one of the reasons why they're trying to put it in this area because there's not that many people to go against it. As far as the union jobs go, I'm all for it. But if they promise you union jobs, or are they going to build non-union? And the people that actually build the turbines are specialists. That are going to come in from out of town. I don't see any benefits tax wise. My school taxes in Sanford are quite high. I'm over 65 and I don't have any kids in school. I don't see the benefit of this project in any way, either for lowering our electric rates 
forest, improving our quality of life, improving the value of our land. I think this is a, just a big joke, I really do, and I'm insulted that you're even considering this project in this area. Thank you very much. Great. How's this for? I gotta get my gold bird. <laughs> Uh, I want to thank all of you for coming down tonight.